little story here. So the first question that he had asked about CT and ionizing radiation and MR and ionizing radiation. So way back in 2003, we were putting an MRI <coughs> in our Bhaveshwar VR building, which is a ground plus first commercial and the rest is residential. And uh, one of the tenants uh, filed a case against us saying that all this is very harmful and he wrote down that MRI causes radiation and people will die of cancer in the future. And we told half the tenants were with us, half were with him for variety of reasons as always happens, went to court and we had a very smart lawyer who kept so the status quo was we could go ahead and install the machine because the stay order was maintain status quo, which was we had started installing. So that was not an issue, but clearly if we lost the case, we would have had to install it somewhere else. And my lawyer was very smart, so he kept delaying the case until he found the right judge. The judge in the end was Dr. R. M. Loda, right judge in the sense, someone smart and intelligent who understood this. So Loda sahab looks at, at the final hearing, looks at and says, ye kya hai? MRI mein radiation thodi hota hai, ye to mere ko bhi malum hai. And he told the guy, case is dismissed, this is all wrong. And he's asking us, do you want to file charges against that? It just took <laughs> that much, right? I mean, otherwise they would have to do research, etc. But when a judge says, Mere ko bhi itna malum hai, ye kya stupidity hai, that was the end of it. So I'm just saying, wow. it, sometimes these things yeah. matter, you know, in life. Uh, what is the radiation? We just spoke about how the radiation risk of coronary uh, 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 angiography through CT scan and through catheterization is not very different. What is the comparison between radiation risk of both? Can I then advise, instead of doing two procedures, sometimes if I get an abnormal catheter, sorry, coronary angio, I will have to do a catheter angio and double the radiation of the patient, double the dye used. Should I... Uh, yeah, so now, you know, you've stirred a sleeping rabid dog. <laughs> and you're, so when the answer was given that, you know, the radiation, uh, x-ray causes radiation and harm and PD children, for example, are at more harm, that's traditional teaching. So the answers obviously were right, but it's not correct. Okay, so let's just look at the entire issue of radiation risk. Theoretically, radiation of any amount is supposed to produce DNA mutations that then have the possibility of producing cancer, right? That part we understand. The till 1987 or 88, nobody talked about radiation risk to any great extent except to professionals. So as radiologists, when we did fluoroscopy, we had to take care of our own cells with lead aprons, thyroid shields, lead glasses and all of that. Nobody talked of patient-related radiation risk unless it was a nuclear accident or an atomic bomb or attack or something like that. Then came a paper which did something called an extrapolation of data from Hiroshima and Nagasaki where they said that if 1000 millisieverts of exposure um, produces X risk of cancer, then one millisievert of exposure can produce 1000 divided by X, or sorry, X divided by 1000 risk of cancer. It was a mathematical uh, computation that if that is the case, then that means no amount of radiation is safe and every amount of radiation has its risk. So one millisievert is what in those days a chest x-ray would produce. Today in our CT scans, we have radiation doses of 2 to 3 millisieverts for a plain CT scan. Now, this is a theory. It's a hypothesis based on mathematics, but it went viral. 
in those days without any social media the newspapers picked it up um, in australia ct scans went down by 65% for that year a lot of things happened and physicists because you're in the academic world you have to publish this became a whole spate then they started saying oh but this patient received 25 millisieverts so that person's risk is now 10 times more than a chest x-ray and you must have read all this you know in the times of india in those days and it would all be everywhere in the last 30 years an entire generation of doctors and radiologists has come to now believe that therefore radiation produces cancer and we should be careful etc etc it's been 129 years since the discovery of x rays 128 years we're not talking of 10 years 20 years statins is 35 years and we're still talking of statin related myopathy because there is data 128 years after the in use of the first x ray machine there is not one single randomized controlled trial or a prospective study that shows that radiation produces cancer in adults and i'll come to children in a little while in adults not one you would think in 128 years just following people you would have one study that shows that radiation from diagnostic Uh, imaging would produce cancer if we even radiologists don't have an increased risk of cancer and we are exposed to radiation with fluoroscopy etc etc now the reason for that is because there's a safe limit of 50 millisieverts within which you uh, don't so we call it the low no threshold theory where there is a threshold below which you don't have an increase risk and the body takes care of the insults that occur but that is the theory again but you would just ask yourself that if there is no data then how can you know as medical people as people of science we eventually look at data right you look at prospective studies you look at retrospective studies observational data rcts but some study you know the thing in adults so in adults it doesn't matter one more thing and this i sometimes have to tell helicopter daughters especially and children you know what helicopter dot children are right Con constantly hovering around their children or their parents right so let's say you have a 70 year old who requires a ct scan so the child uh, the son daughter son in law somebody will come and say are pan emne radiation thase pachi su thase so even if you assume for a moment that radiation produces cancer the effect of that mutation is 20 years so if you already have a ca lung and you need to get a pet ct done every 3 months you're not going to live 20 years no to get another cancer i mean come on yeah so you need to explain all this it was so bad there was a ceo of a bank a lady who had ca breast metastatic who only used to get whole body mris done because she believed that radiation produces risk now metastatic ca breast the best case you're going to live for 6 to 7 years more and we couldn't get it into her head you know educated ran for lok sabha elections all of that but we couldn't make her understand that um, you know you are not going to die of radiation until finally i had to tell her on her face and then she agreed and then she started getting pet cts done but this is the long and short of it so i would say to summarize in adults there is no proof for data in 128 years which is a very long period of time that radiation produces increased uh, cancer risk from any diagnostic imaging including cath angios etc in children there may be a possibility we still don't know 
there is no harm being a little more careful in children and not doing unnecessary testing. If the test is required, it has to be done. So, sorry, long answer, but I think it's important to be understand. Absolutely. This.